In a previous video, I explained the nature of stress and the various sources where it comes from. Now, let's look at how to reduce the level of stress in your life. This model of stress provides four different ways to reduce the stress we experience in our lives. Applying these principles is vital for successfully coping with the daily demands in your life and how you lead others. First, you can reduce perceived demands. Take all of those expectations of the way things should be when life was normal, that is pre-pandemic, and critically evaluate them. Are my expectations for myself and for others too high? Are they realistic and sustainable given our current circumstances? By the way, set our reputation in the community or industry off to the side. People and organizations who don't survive aren't worried about their reputation. Second, reduce actual demands. This may seem impossible, but it's not. Yes, there are demands you have to meet if you're going to maintain and continue to be a licensed provider of services. But there are also activities, habits, and traditions that have developed over time and are good things to do when you have the resources that currently aren't needed in order for you, either personally and your organization, to survive the current ordeal we're going through. No, you don't have to organize a field trip to the zoo or do the annual holiday pageant at the local theater. If a colleague says, we can't give that up, let them take the responsibility to make it happen. Third, increase perceived resources. Times and circumstance occur where we have to access resources, but we won't allow ourselves to access them. The simplest example is asking for help. Sometimes we have more tasks to accomplish within a time period than we have realistically the time or energy to do so. One solution is to ask for some help from a colleague. But for some, including all groups, professionals, clinicians, frontline staff, asking for help is anathema against a strong belief that they hold that asking for help displays weakness on their part. Or, as an organization, you may have created a fund to pay for a special field trip for residents, but due to reduced revenue, you may have to use those funds to pay for staff overtime, which is a higher priority. Fourth, increase your actual resources. Again, this may seem impossible. We all only have 24 hours in a day and typically have limited financial resources as well but there are ways we can create additional resources. We get more energy when we rest and sleep. Recreational activities are designed to help us re-energize. Listening to or playing music, engaging in artistic and craft activities, playing games, socializing with friends, laughing, exercising. All are ways we can create more resources to cope with the demands in our lives. In reality, when we combine some aspects from all four areas, the results can be significant. The lesson is this. While none of us are truly in control of the forces that shape our lives, we are in control of our daily choices and how we choose to perceive the circumstances we find ourselves in. One of the hallmark characteristics of those who survive difficult times is gratitude. Being thankful for what you have, and what you've been blessed to experience in your life in the past. Being grateful helps us focus on the positive aspects in our lives rather than giving all of our time and emotional energy to the negative circumstances in which we find ourselves. I want to encourage you to try to reduce the stress in your life by applying these four different areas, reducing actual demands, reducing perceived demands, increasing actual resources and increasing perceived resources and take control of the stress that you're experiencing in your life and your day-to-day -day experiences will be a lot better. Thanks.